everybody i just want to take this minute to uh weigh in on our uh current state of the of america um i know i'm not the first person to say anything first not the first person to believe that god put something on their heart i'm not the first person to put out a video i may not have anything better to say but i've took some time recently and i've really thought about you know the signs that we see out in out in our society you go out to the grocery store and there's no food on there's no food or very little food on the shelves there are people are fighting over the food fighting over toilet paper our church doors are shut our buildings our church buildings are shut um which is something i never thought i'd see um and i really think about what that says as a as a, about us what it says about Americans and the current state of our minds and um, I think it's kind of troubling um, here we are supposed to be the most blessed country the most prosperous country in the world and we're fighting over food and fighting over toilet paper um, we're only thinking of ourselves and not uh, the less fortunate not the elderly um, and we're just trying to make sure we got what we need for our own household and no, don't care about nobody else's. I don't care if this person's kids don't have what they need. I don't care if somebody's kids don't have milk. I'm gonna go get five gallons. Even though I can't use five gallons, I'm gonna go get five gallons. And that says a lot about somebody's heart. Um, <clears throat> Cause we can say that we care about others. We can say that we, we love everybody and we can say all these things, but when the rubber meets the road and things really get serious, this is when you see how people's true heart and, and their true character coming out. And the uh, first thing I want to say is that, is that, you know, there's not a shortage of food. There's not a shortage of goods in America. There's a shortage of character in America. There's a shortage of um, true God's love, of God's true love. Um, and, <clears throat> but there's a shortage of character, plain and simple. No shortage of food, no shortage of goods, shortage of character, shortage of integrity. And um, I think it's something we really need, really need to step back and look at, Christian or not. And um, another thing is, I look out and I see all, all through my life, I remember hearing sermons and pastors and, and fellow Christians say, wait, we're not shutting our doors. The government can't make us close our doors. The government can't make us do this. No matter what they try, we're going to stay here and we'll, we'll, we'll die for our faith. We'll die to have church. And then I look back the last couple of weeks and all it took was a, was a virus scare to make everybody lock them doors up. And I wonder, did the world just call your bluff church? I ain't trying to sound super Christian, super spiritual, super holy. We're all sinners saved by grace. It's just a, it's just a thought, just a word. Um, you know, the church was always a place that was safe. You know, no matter what was going on in this world, you could go inside those four walls and it was a different world. The different family you were with your brothers and sisters in Christ you're part of God's family but these past couple weeks we um we locked them up we separated ourselves from each other and separate and and while I know that the church doors are just simply that church doors that the body is is the the body of Christ is the church um <clears throat> it's still been a, a light in the community it's still um it's still a, a sign of safety and peace and uh, still for, a place for people to go to get away from everything and um, we locked it up and we ran away. We ran away from the confrontation that the world brought to us. <laughs> and um, we really need to look back at that. I'm not saying that, uh, that social distancing is not a, a, a valid um, way to fight this physically and I'm not telling everybody to go in there and shake everybody's hands and hug on each other and slobber all over each other <laughs> but what I am saying is this I challenge every single pastor every single church leader um, every single pew sitter it's time to become servants of Christ and not just a pew sitter not just a church member and not just a pastor or an elder in name it's time to be servants of Christ and I challenge each one of you, every church, every church leader, every every pastor, 
to open up your doors this week. Not for a full church, con uh, church congregation uh, worship service. Not for um, a social club meeting. I challenge you to open your doors um, in the evenings. Open them up during the day, whatever it takes. And have some church representation there. Um, take security measures as you see fit. Um, and have it open for people to come in and pray. People to come in and worship. You can play worship music over your sound system. But be there uh, for support. But have the doors open for, for people to come in and pray. To worship. And um, for people who are in the community who may not be Christians. who are, Maybe they're scared. Maybe they're, maybe they're uh, worried. And they're looking for some hope. And looking for some light. Be there for them. Because they may not always know how to do it on their own. But they can come there. And you can show them where it's at. You can show them the way to Christ. And you can tell them that you're there to love them, that you're there to uh, take care of any needs they may have. And uh, <laughs> you, can be, you can be there for people the way Jesus would want us to be. And um, that's the, I think it's the biggest thing. In America, whether or not you want to turn to Christ or not, it's up to you. <laughs> Revival comes at our choice. It doesn't come as some kind of magical wand is waved by God it comes at the choice of the Christians to choose to take their, their lives more seriously to choose to go after Jesus hard and um, we gotta we gotta really see because right now I think church we've got a we have a chance church to really change the way America handles this to really change what happens to America we can actually change how America comes out of this whether we come out of this thing better or worse. <clears throat> so I challenge the body of Christ and America. America, the world is watching. The world's watching America. They, they're going to see how, how we handle this and they're going to know who we really are by the way we handle this. And uh, church, the world's watching you too. I stand up to the test. <laughs>